confidence intervals. The first confidence interval we do in our book is a confidence interval on a proportion. To do this by hand, we would take the proportion estimate and then we would add or subtract the margin of error So let's say we have a proportion estimate in our sample and p hat is 0.37. Let's say alpha is 0.1. So alpha over 2, 0.1 divided by 2, 0.05. What this means is, if our sample proportion is 0.37, we want to find the two points on the horizontal axis that leave half of alpha in each tail. That would be a 90% confidence interval. This distance is the margin of error. So, how do we find those values? Well, we could find this value as a z-score, and then we could multiply it by p hat times q hat divided by n, or we could let the calculator do it for us. Let's say n is 500. To do our confidence level by calculator, we're going to press the STAT key. We're going to arrow over to tests. Now, if you look at choice 5, that's one dash prop Z test. We don't want that one. We want choice A, and you can go down or up just like you did with binomial and find one prop z int. And that int is really important. Can't tell you how many people go for the fifth line and do a test and get a stupid answer. Once we enter on that, now our calculator asks us what is x, what's n, What's the C level? And then we calculate. Well, gosh, I don't know X. I know my P hat. It's 0.37. But I could just type in 0.37 times N, which we said was going to be 500. And my calculator will cross that off and put in the 185 that I needed. N is 500. Now, if I multiplied that myself and got some decimal, I would have to round to an integer because your calculator wants X to be an integer. My C level. Well, C level is 1 minus alpha. That's the confidence level. So if they gave you alpha, you could certainly calculate your C level. That's going to be 0 
and my calculator tells me 0.3348, sorry, 448, to 0.40552 is my 90% confidence interval. If I was asked what my margin of error is, Well, that would be the range of the confidence interval, 0 0.40552 minus 0.33448 divided by 2. If they gave me an X value and I wanted to find a confidence level using Z, which is very unusual, Then we would go to stat, arrow over to tests. This time we want choice seven. The Z interval. Now when we get there, we have our choice. Our input could be data in a table. So it would have to have been entered in a list. And we remember how to enter a list. Or we could just have the statistics. The sample mean, the standard deviation, etc. So let's say we have the statistics. We want to highlight the statistics, enter there. Then we need to know our population standard deviation. Oh, let's just make up some numbers so we can do a trial run. Let's say our standard deviation is 17. Wants to know what our sample mean is. Let's say our sample mean is 80. They want to know our sample size. Let's say our sample size is 250. Now we need a confidence level. Oh, let's say our confidence level is oh, 92%. 0.92 and then we enter on calculate my output tells me my confidence level goes from 78.118 to 81.882 However, we usually have to use a T interval. They don't let us use Z intervals as often as they used to because we rarely know our population standard deviation. So again, we press STAT, we arrow over to tests, 
we go down to choice eight, T interval. And again, we have our choice of having input as data or statistics. Since I didn't have us enter anything in our list, we'll use statistics again. This time, they want our sample mean first. Let's say our sample mean is 117. Then they want our sample standard deviation. Let's say it's 30. Then they want n. What should we make n be? How about 25? And a C level. Shall we do 86% confidence level, 0.86? You can put any number in you want. And we're going to calculate. Now I say we can put any number in we want. When we have a problem, we'll have specific numbers we must put in. This takes a little longer when you hit it on the calculator. It's got a little bit of cooking to do, but my 86% confidence interval is 107.84 to 126.16. And that will probably get you through confidence intervals. Although sometimes you have to find a t-statistic. The t-statistic let's say n is 8, alpha is 0.2, Find the critical point T. This means if you were going to do this by hand, you would have X bar plus or minus the T critical point times the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Well, the t critical point, I call it t alpha over 2 and degrees of freedom. You need to know those two pieces of information. The t distribution is very similar to normal, but it's flatter. And Alpha is 0.2, that means I'm putting 0.1 in each tail. And I want to know this value in a t distribution. Well, that value has 90% to the left. So I would want to do an INVT with 90%, and then I would have to tell it my degrees of freedom. If we hit second bars, go down to choice four, INVT. It wants area, we said was 0.9, and degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1. In this case, that would be 7. 
So if you're entering it in an old calculator that had the INVT function, and some of the old calculators don't, you would enter 0 0.9 comma 7. And we would get 1.4149. If you don't have a calculator with an INVT function, you're going to have to use the tables in the back of the book, and you won't be able to get a precise value for any possible alpha. You'll have to choose the most conservative, closest alpha you can get. But I believe that is going to fix you right up for confidence intervals.